I'd like to welcome everybody to the Dodge City Community College Coaches Show. Today we have head men's, women's, head men's and women's soccer coach Tim Romanello with us. Thank you for meeting no us today, Tim. Um, we'll start with the men's team. You know, you guys had your first game Monday night. How do you felt that went out to line? You know, I thought it went pretty well. Uh, we uh, were certainly possessed with a purpose this year. Last year, I think we were a little bit on the defensive and we possessed to not give up the ball. Um, we possess not to give up goals. This year, we're not afraid to take risks. We're we're afraid to keep moving. It, we're not afraid to keep moving it around and and really attack the space that's available to us. And we want to get to goal. These guys uh, certainly want to score goals, which mm -hmm. is kind of the name of the game. So yeah. uh, we played well. We, we we certainly played well, and and things are off to a good start. But there's still plenty to work on. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you get you give up that early goal right at the end of half, three minutes before mm -hmm. halftime. And um, did it seem to take the wind out of the sails at all, kind of put your team down going into halftime, knowing you just gave up a goal? Well, and, and not to com make comparisons uh, from this year's team to last year's team, but last year's team, we were okay until we gave up a goal. And the moment that we gave up a goal, things would just fall apart. Confidence would skyrocket through the floor. Uh, the bottom would fall out. This year. Um, you give up a penalty before halftime, just before halftime, and that can be a little bit deflating. Uh, but the guys responded really well. Um, after halftime, we didn't necessarily play very well for that first 10 minutes. Uh, but, but, you know, down two goals, it says a lot about a team's character and resiliency to really start increasing the intensity, um, increasing the pressure and getting after it. And we come from two goals down to, to yeah. earn a result as a tie. Yeah, you mentioned coming back from two goals down. I mean, you had a couple missed opportunities there just to start the second half, and then you gave up that second goal, and then I was sitting at the two. Did, did anything change, I mean, attack-wise or anything like that, knowing that now you're going to try to come up with two? You know, I think you're you're playing with uh, a little bit more pressure on your shoulders because you have to you have to be able to manage the emotions. Um, there There's opportunities there where you know you're two goals down, and you have to go out and, and, and really force some issues. Um, really start pressing, maybe you start playing a little bit direct, but we didn't do any of that. We, we were very calm, collected, we continued our game plan, we continued how we possess, how we play, um, and let the goals happen, so to speak. Um, last year we kind of had to get two or three goals scoring one, which you can't do, and we just said, hey look, if we get one, we're going to get one, and we, we can go out and get another one. That's always our focus. If, don't be satisfied with just scoring once keep going, and if they do score one, can you keep it at one? If they do score two, can you keep it at two? And when we do score two, can we get three? When we do score a fourth, can we get five? Um, and the mentality's been you know, really good at training, and especially in that second half there where we really started to push the pressure. Yeah. You know, I've heard a lot of soccer coaches say, you know, it's always, it's always harder to coach with a two goal lead than it is a one goal lead, just because you might fall back a little bit, defense, more defensively, something like that. When you guys found that first goal to cut the lead in half in the sixth and seventh minute, did that give the guys a sense of, you know, we can do this, we can find that 10 minutes, tie it up? And get yeah, it you know, anytime that you score a goal, especially when you're trailing, uh, I think that gives the guys a little bit more added encouragement that, okay, let's go out and get this one. Um, the one thing that I do not have to worry about this team at the moment, knock on wood, is their hunger. They just want to keep going, they just want to get better, they want to keep pushing the issue. And now it, it really comes down to our pace of play um, and our ability to have some vision here, uh, creating chances and, and, and when we do have the ball. Yeah, so I mean, last couple minutes of regulation, you're getting real into desperation time. And you have one of your players draw a penalty and you convert the penalty kick and you tie it up for the 88th minute. Did that give any sense of, let's get this into overtime and see if we can pull another one out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the what we have from from last year is probably about four kids, five kids from last year's team. So, you know, when you carry 23, 24 guys on a regular basis, um, we have 19 or 18 freshmen. A lot so, of newcomers. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, the, the, you know, we had a freshman go in, take the penalty, and, and converted it. And then it was just a matter of we made a, a, a simple adjustment again and went after the goal and said, hey, look, if we give up a goal because we're trying to win the game, it is what it is. Um, and, and we're just trying to make sure that we are not only playoff ready, but we're ready to make any kind of run. Uh, and that's how we're going to approach every day. That's how we're going to approach the, the season. I'm not, I'm not too concerned with, with wins and losses. It's, you know, 
it, it comes down to are you going to make the playoffs, are you going to qualify, mm -hmm. and then the matchup and how you deal with those pressure situations. And that's exactly what the regular season you know, is. If, if we don't win a non-conference game, we don't win a non-conference game, our job is to qualify for the, for the region tournament. That's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, we want to win the conference. Uh, we want to be a high seed. We want to host playoff games, etc., yeah. etc. We want to win every game. Um, as a competitor, as a coach, you know that doesn't change. But can we execute in pressure situations? And Irvin did a really good job about converting that 88-minute yep. penalty. Yeah. So uh, your next game is against uh, Northern Oklahoma College on Cal. Typically, a very well, very well-off team, good team. Typically, ranked top 25. But your home opener. Feel like having that home edge might help at all, getting fans out, coming out to a game. No, home as home <laughs> no. Um, Mike does a really good job down at Northern Oklahoma. He's a coach that I have a ton of respect for. Um, his teams are usually ready to go and 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 up for the tempo, up for the task. Uh, historically speaking, they give us a lot of problems, um, but we're far better in terms of our matchup lately with that. It doesn't matter where we play at home or down in Tonkawa. It, it's going to be a good game, and, and they are a really good opponent to open up the year against, especially at home because they're going to test us in a lot of ways, and we're going to test them in a lot of ways. So um, do I feel more comfortable at home? No, not really. I never do um, because I think the conference from top to bottom, especially on the West, um, and some of these non-conference teams that we play, such as Northern Oklahoma, uh, they're going to compete nationally. Um, so that that really is. It doesn't matter if you're playing them at home or we're playing them at home. Um, it, it's just going to it's going to be a tough matchup because they're well coached and, and they play really well. Yeah. If we flip over to the women's side, you know, they've had to wait a little bit to get their season started. Still don't play till next week. How has camp gone so far in terms of them trying to get you acclimated and get going? It, it, we have been able to do a lot of different things this year than we have in the past. Um, and I don't mean that with any kind of disrespect to any other years. It's just we're a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more technical, and have a little bit more ability that we're able to accomplish much. And, and, and when you look at the progression of the men's side, um, the women are starting to mirror that where we get better and better players in every single year. So right now it's been a, a little bit of a fitness issue where we're trying to get um, fit. I, I think we're about 60, 65 minutes when you – when you add it, um, but we relied on a lot of players that aren't here anymore last year. Um, and now trying to find out who we can and cannot rely on um, and who fits in what piece of the puzzle, yeah. things like that, that's been a little bit slower this year than it has in, in recent past because we have a bunch of players that can play kind of all over. It doesn't help the fact that Cynthia is injured yeah. um, with a torn quad, so we're trying to get her healthy and back. There's a couple other people like Annie Power. She's injured. She's carrying a few knocks where we're trying to get her in the midst. And, and yeah. um, has it come a little bit slower than I think in, re in, in past years? Yeah. But I think we're still ahead of the bell curve uh, on where we're going and where we are, knowing um, what we have to work with and, and the different things. But they certainly are ready to get some of these competitions going and, 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 and start playing games that are meaningful. Yeah, that can always be a factor of trying to bring in these freshman crews. Yeah. So <clears throat> you guys played one scrimmage so far to this point. You have another one tonight at 6.30. So how's, how's the team looking, the limited action that they've had knowing which kind of game? Uh, the last Friday we got rained out halfway through. Um, we didn't play a very good first half. Um, we were kind of all over the place. We played a team that has played together for four or five years. Mm -hmm. So they knocked around the ball really well, but they exploited different areas that uh, we're still very green in. Um, but we played with a lot of nerves, I think more than I thought we were going to play with. And I think it kind of caught our girls off on how nervous they were going to play in that first, you know, 40 minutes mm -hmm. that, that we scrimmaged. Uh, yeah. Weather delay. Uh, we come in at halftime, we make some corrections, and we looked far more comfortable on the ball and in our movement and our defending in the second half. But then six minutes into the half, you know, we get called because of the weather. Yeah. You really can't see how that half is going to progress. So exactly. I think tonight's scrimmage is going to uh, say a lot of where we are and express the things that we need to work on going into Thursday's opener. Um, and then we have another chance on Saturday to kind of make the corrections that we will have tonight to make, um, capitalize on the things that really work well, 
um, going into Thursday's match as well. Yeah, I mean, you see all these teams already get their season started, and you know, might make people cheer a little bit, a little bit. But knowing that you have those three scrimmages in essence to kind of work the yeah. kinks out before you get to that first game, that always helps. So uh, looking at the roster, you're trying seven players from last year's squad. How do you feel that the bringing seven girls back helps in terms of the leadership and just knowing what you want to accomplish as a team? Well, you know, Ariana, Dominique, Laudy, Joanna, um, Emily, for example, this will be her third year because she registered her first year. You know, all those kids that come back, it makes a huge difference. You know, when Cynthia comes back, when she when she's healthy, they know the league, they know the teams, they know what's expected. Um, and when you bring in a talented crop of freshmen, you can kind of have them molded into what we're going to do, what we expect, um, and, and kind of turn over, so to speak, on really instead of just turning your wheels and spinning in the mud, you know, we're gaining some traction and, and, and being able to develop a program where where we want to go and, yeah. and accomplish some of the things that we're um, looking to accomplish. We finished with 10 wins last year. We're trying to beat that. You always want to, to progress forward, but um, that started with the kids that we brought in and, and the kids that we have, um, you know, they're, they're freshmen and there's going to be some learning curves, but the kids that we have retained and brought back are going to play a huge role in, in that development and our results that we're going to get this year. So those kids, they mean the world to me, but um, they, they're a bigger part of this program than, than I think anybody realizes. Yeah, I mean, you touched briefly on the expectation part. And a little bit new this year, KJCCC is going to be broken into the East and West Division. You guys were picked second in the preseason versus Paul. Just having that target on your back in a sense to kind of make things different in how you approach the game or how you approach the season as a whole? I think from a player's standpoint, and maybe it's a little bulletin uh, motivation for some other coaches. It doesn't bother me where you pick us. Uh, for instance, on the men's side, we're picked fifth or fourth. On the women's side, it's second. Does that reflect last year's standings? Um, maybe. Um, does that mean that we're not going to be very good? I mean, that's up for interpretation for any other coach, any other players. I think there's more expectation on the players on where they are preseason picked than anything. I think it's it's great for social media, um, but in terms of your program, that doesn't change the things that we do every day or the expectations of the program or us coming into this season on who we schedule, who we don't schedule, when we play well, when we don't, yeah. um, how we go to class, how we conduct ourselves uh, behavior-wise. Um, it just, it's great material for social media, but for us, the expectation that we have is we're looking to get better every day. And I mean, to add to that, you know, you look at how it got split in the East West, obviously, that's geographical based. But by being in the West, you're now going to play all the other West teams in a round mm -hmm. robin, and you're going to avoid some of those typical powers like a Johnstown or like a Butler. Does that change anything on how you guys are hoping? I mean, are you hoping to see them come November when you guys are in your hopefully postseason stuff yeah. like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we hope to see Johnson County and Butler because in the playoffs, that means we've, we've done something right and we've advanced. Um, on the flip side, we may have avoided Johnson County and Butler, but now we have to play Hutch twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a decent trade-off, um, but now you're playing Barton twice where it was a close game last year in the regular season you so do you get you know do you get the benefit of the doubt at home but then you lose on the road mm -hmm. you know does it what's that trade-off I think Northwest Tech is going to be better Pratt has um, a slew of girls now instead of just their normal 13 or 14 they have 18 on scholarship so they have four extra girls that they can work with um, we don't play teams like Neosho that are maybe struggled with having their roster issues. I think that's set, but they're on the East, so we don't play them. Yeah. Um, but having Barton twice, Heston twice, which was actually a, a more difficult of a matchup last year than I think anybody expected. Um, and you have Tech that's gonna be better. You have them twice. You have everybody twice, Garden City twice. You have your, you know, your, your arch rival twice. Mm -hmm. I think that plays into things a lot different than playing everybody once. Yeah. Once there's a there's a one off. Now you play everybody twice, home and home. There's a little bit more familiarity. Yeah. There's a little bit more of a thicker scout uh, scouting report. There's, you know how teams operate yeah. now. By the time you play them a second time, 
and you can either take advantage of it or it just crumbles because the other team knows you that much better yeah. too. I mean, it's always difficult to go and beat a team just like trying not to be the award. Yes, absolutely. And if you're the team that fell on the losing side that first time around, you're going to have that extra motivation. So. Absolutely. But Tim, I'd like to thank you for meeting with us today and uh, good luck to you Monday. And Appreciate for all it. you fans out there, be sure to tune in later today for the preseason preseason interview with head football coach Gary Thomas. <laughs>